Well, hello and welcome back to another webinar here at the PIPN. My name is Dr. Wayne Fimister, and I am talking today about habits for success. Maybe a bit of an odd subject uh, matter for finding solutions for chronic pain. But, you know, in my reading and understanding and also working with my patients, one of the things that I came across that was a hurdle at them actually succeeding was not knowing what to do, but actually implementing what to do. So that's the basis of this talk. And I'm thrilled that you're here. This is a recorded webinar and I will be live for Q&A at the end. So let's start. The first talk that we did looked at the meaning. You know, we move from meaning to acceptance and then expectation. And by changing our language around pain is an absolutely fundamental approach, in my opinion, to help us move forward with this. Because so many people are just stuck in the situation, trying this, trying the next thing, trying the next thing. And without that reflection, without that acceptance without that different language around this subject of chronic pain it is very difficult to make headway you know moving away from complaining and expecting your doctor to fix it moving away from that feeling of helplessness and powerlessness where if you start with meaning what can you get out of this what are the benefits of your suffering then you can learn to grow and heal, and you can also help other people. You get a sense of purpose, change in direction of your brain, how it's working, of your mind, how that's functioning, and also in your behavior and your actions. On the initial webinar series that I did in 2019, we covered lots of different activities regarding cognitive behavioral therapy. So that's your thinking, that's your behaviors, you know, lots and lots of tips on things to do. But the question is, how many of them are you doing? How often? And for how long are you doing them each day and each week? The question is, are you committed? And if you are, there's a hurdle. And just the fact that you're you and I'm me, because I experienced this as well, the fact that we're human, we have a hurdle that prevents us doing what we need to do to get better, to heal. You know, we're all busy people. And the fact is, when we introduce a new activity into our lives, we don't end up doing it. Now, some of us are maybe lazy, and if that's us, then we need to change that. But even though we're not lazy, we want to do it. We're a kind of, let's, let's do things type of person. We're not able to do it. And the reason is because we're conditioned to do what is normal, or conditioned to do what is a habit. Very difficult to change a habit because we're always doing old habits. And the science around this is fascinating because it takes approximately two months or 60 days or so of doing something regularly to make it into a habit where you don't think. And all of a sudden that subconscious part of the brain, the limbic system of the brain is kicked in and we just do it. So I came across a wonderful book mm, several months ago written by a gentleman called James Clear. The book is called Atomic Habits. So if you're interested in learning more about this subject, you can definitely check out the book. But what I'm gonna be talking about for the remainder of the webinar and answering questions is around this subject. Now, the implementation of your cognitive behavioral exercises or your brain exercises, as I like to call them in the office, 
is the key to success. So what are the tips? Well, in the book, he talks about for a habit to become successfully implemented in your life, it's got to have four qualities. It's got to be obvious, it's got to be easy, it's got to be attractive, and it's got to be satisfying. So with chronic pain, you know, it's obvious, right? You want to reduce your pain. I want to reduce my pain. I recently went through a, a new chronic pain experience um, in the last six months with my right big toe. And um, I didn't understand why it came on, but I was, you know, of course I wanted it to go. It was very painful when I did certain activities, when I swam, when I did stretches in the morning. I got lancing, burning pain right on my big toe. Um, so it's obvious. The second thing, easy. Unless we do easy activities, we're not gonna do it. Let's, let's face, let's be real with ourselves. Things have got to be easy in order for us to implement and to continue doing it. The third thing is attractive. Well, having less pain is very attractive. Having more quality of life, very attractive. Better function or more function, very attractive. What would you do with less pain in your life? What is the attractive thing for you that you could get out of this? And the fourth is satisfying. You've got to be satisfied with a new habit. So with this, chronic pain reduction, chronic pain solutions, finding ways to, to master it, it's extremely satisfying. I'm sure you'd agree. And comes back actually to the first talk we did about bringing more purpose to your life. Many, many patients. In fact, a lady I was talking to just yesterday who I've been working with. And she has had her pain literally go away with the persistent allodynia pain or sensitivity of the skin that is so sensitive that bedclothes or clothes can't even touch it. So very satisfying to get your life back and to do doing things that you really want to do. Now the key is this, in order for our habits to become our habits, our new habits is we need to piggyback them on to something that we're already doing. So something you want to do with something you need to do, okay? So you want to learn different ways, learn different ways of <laughs> I lost my track, train of thought. So essentially, you want to do new things, so you pick it back on something you're already doing, wants and needs. A classic is to do things after you brush your teeth or a cup of coffee. You know, we always brush your teeth. So if you sit down after brushing your teeth, morning or night, and do these activities, you won't need to think about it. Or if you have breakfast in the morning, or you know, enjoy a cup of coffee, you're always doing that every day. You do these activities that you need to do, and then you're doing a new thing that you want to do to reduce pain. So my tip, to begin with, as James says in his book, is two minutes. So it's a two minute commitment, that's all. Two minute commitment of the activities that you're doing to sit down and do them. And the reason for two minutes is we want it to be easy, we want it to be attractive, you know, we want it to be um, satisfying and obvious. So by making it two minutes, it's very doable. And it's not about doing your activities, it's about the habit of doing your activities. So my request, would you think about in your day that you can do the same thing daily?
Did we pick a time of the day, morning, afternoon, or evening? What's something you're doing every day without failure? Okay, so just think of that time, and that's the time you're going to start with. So now we're going to do an exercise, and I will pause the recording. And in fact, I'll ask you to pause the recording and to go and do it and then come back and finish what we're doing here. So go and, um, in fact, let's go and grab a piece of paper right now and a pen. Or if you want to pull out your phone and record it on your phone or whatever device you may be using. So hopefully you've done that and you've come back. So the first thing is we're going to list all the things you do to help your current pain state. All the things. Could be breathing, could be writing, could be going for walks, could be calling a friend, could be distraction, doesn't matter. Lots of things that you're doing, I'm sure. List them all, number one. Number two, when do you do them? So next to it, just write down, morning, evening. How often do you do them? Once a week? Once a day? Once a month? And then you're going to plan. Write down the time of the day that you're going to do your regular activity, number four, two minutes. Now once you've done it for two minutes and as the weeks roll on, then you can increase the time you're doing it to maybe five minutes, 50 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And get that as a habit of success. So I'd like you to stop the recording right now and do this exercise. Spend five, 10 minutes doing it as long as you need. And when you're finished, come back to the recording and continue listening. Okay, so you've all done your activities, I hope, and um, you've got all of them written down, you know what they are, how often you do them, when you do them, and you have a plan for the two-minute exercise every day. So the next thing we're going to talk about is daily routine. Some of this is going to be a repetition of what we've done, because at the end of the day, you know, I think we have so much information but what do we do with it? So, you know, a lot of this will be repeated with a few tips and how to further optimize these habits. So make it a daily routine. Essential for success is a daily routine. You know, I like brushing the teeth before you go to bed because most people do that. It certainly isn't something we don't think about. I also like the time of a cup of coffee in the morning, although that doesn't fit in with my schedule of being able to do activities. So pick something. Pick something that you'll always do. Second point is habit tracking. Track what you do. If you measure it, you'll do more of it. Okay? Journal your activities. I mentioned that brief previously and certainly in my first few webinars, journaling is a really important tool for lots of reasons. But in this case, we're going to be tracking your activities. And then you measure it. See how you're going. As the weeks roll on, reflect back. Started with two minutes. Maybe you did it for four days a week. And um, you didn't do it every day. We did it for four days. That's okay. And then the next week and then the next week. So measure it. Third subject is accountability. It's been shown that when we're accountable, then things get done. So who in your family, who in your life, maybe a friend, maybe a partner, you could be accountable for. So have a conversation about it. Tell them what you're doing. And they can lovingly support you through this journey. Another way for accountability is text reminders. 
Most of us have all got phones, your reminders, or sitting at a computer, get a notification to come on. So lots of ways to remind ourselves and be accountable to ourselves to do the activity. And as time moves on, I would pick up the phone and speak to your accountable person or be in person. Purposely set time and said, I want to talk to you about that next week. Can we do that? You know, it'll probably pop into your head. Yeah, yeah, sure. So they can help and remind you. But yeah, talk about it. The fourth subject is contracts. For some people, this is a really good idea. So write out a little letter. You can either type it on your on your PC or your Mac or whatever device you have, or get the old fashioned paper and pen. Write a contract to yourself. This is what you're gonna do, this is when you're gonna do it. And put it somewhere where you see it. Maybe it's on a wall beside your computer. Maybe it's in your bedroom. Maybe it's in the door before you leave the house, anywhere. So get a contract, really good idea for some people. And the last thing is the habit must fit your personality. We're all different. So you've got to be yourself, be practical, and just choose what feels right to you. You know, if you're a type A person, maybe you're one of those people that just loves to get up in the morning, gets things done. Perfect time. You know, if you're a more relaxed, laid back type of person, you would do it later in the day, perfect. No rights or wrongs are right th about this. It's just what me, what's right for you. And on the subject of setting goals, I would suggest um, don't pitch too high. You know, if you want to do it every day, but you don't, it's okay. You know, the two minutes is the key here. Because if you only set two minutes, you'll probably want to do more, you can do more. But if you manage your two days, so two minutes every day, you're being successful. And please, if you don't do it every day, don't see that as a negative thing, right? You're just being human. It's part of the journey. We all need to be kind to ourselves. In fact, I think we are the biggest, we are the biggest reason why things are negative in our life. It's that negative self-talk that's always there. We need to rein that in. We need to realize it's just a part of our conditioning. No, it's okay. You're making progress. You're doing the habits. Doing it four days a week is better than none or twice. So set your goals, achieve them, and then you work up on the time per day. Reward yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back. Be your own coach. Treat yourself to whatever you want. <laughs> you can think of those reasons. But at the end of the day, it's important to realize that we are our own coaches on this journey. So hopefully you like that. Hopefully you will be able to implement these tips for your success. And I look forward to your questions and answers coming up. Thanks so much. Thank you.